Okay, so there is a very interesting, um, you know, book which, uh, you know, if you are, you know, more into the research of it, this is a book that I would rec recommend, Information Design Research and Practice. And there is a chapter uh, in that which specifically talk about uh, the framework for classifying, classifying the visual genre. Okay, and uh, uh, it, um, uh, the chapter I have, uh, you know, included as a PDF file in Google uh, Classroom. So, if you are interested, no, you can take a look at them. It's uh, worth going through them. Okay. So, um, the next thing I want to do is I want to, you know, kind of move on to uh, the types of visualizations and generally, you know, this is a different way of you know, looking at it based on, you know, what they do. Okay. Um, so this was proposed by a guy called Scott Berinato uh, in 2016 in the Harvard Business Review. And eventually, he went on to write a book about it. Uh, but uh, the, the idea is very simple, right? You know, there are only four types of visualizations according to them, and they fall in this spectrum. Okay, they are either declaratory, uh, declarative, exploratory, data-driven, or conceptual. Right? So the four types are these four types. You know, either they are used for illustrating an idea, it is to confirm visually something, it is to discover something visually, or it is to generate an idea. Okay. So, on the left side, you can notice that they are more conceptual in and sometimes it can be entirely free of data also, okay. It will become more obvious as I go through some examples and, and the two types that is on the right hand side, which is about visual con confirmation and visual discovery are data driven, okay. They are data heavy and they can be declarative meaning that you are just summarizing, you are explaining, you are just stating what is there and uh, at the bottom is exploratory where you do not know what it is, right? And the exploratory process is supposed to reveal uh, what the explanation is, uh, what the causes are and so on, okay? Just keep this in mind and then as we go through some examples, it will become more clear. Okay, so the idea generation, you know, which is on the top left corner. It is to clarify complex ideas by drawing on our ability to understand directions. Say for example, up, down, forward, backward is a you know, standard convention that we use, right? Many of you used it in, many of you, you intuitively used it in yesterday's uh, exercise, right? You, you, you know, you started the, at the bottom and then went top or left to right or right to left, right? So this is something that we uh, understand intuitively. We also use metaphors trees and bridges for example, uh, trees have branches then they have in, uh, you know, in turn have uh, further branches and so on. So information ordered in such a way that is very obvious for us to understand. Uh, bridges connect simple design conventions such as you know, uh, circles, hierarchies, organization charts and decision trees are classic examples of idea illustration, right? So the information type is usually process or a framework, so settings are presentation and teaching. Um, the skills that are required to do a visualization of this type is just basic design skills, editing skills. And the goals of such visualizations are to learn, to simplify, to explain, okay? Now, a good example of that is what happened two years ago when people tried to explain the idea of flattening the curve, right? Now you notice that the conventions that they have used or the visual elements that they have used are pretty much borrowed heavily from data visualization, right? So it has a x axis, it has a y axis, it has two curves uh, and but it is completely free of data, right? So here the objective is to use data visualization language in order to illustrate an idea, okay? So you know the idea behind flattening the curve, right? So what initially medical experts thought was that uh, we need to delay the process of everybody getting sick, okay? Because this was an unknown virus, they thought that everybody is going to get sick. But if everybody turns up in the hospital at the same time or in a very short time, our hospital capacity will be overwhelmed and we will not be able to treat and many people will die, okay? So the best way to do something about it is to go for a lockdown, okay? 
So this was the illustration that was used by the lockdown proponents to convince people, many governments bought into this idea, including our own government, and we said that let us lock down before the medical community can figure out some solution for it, right? Uh, remember vaccines were, you know, one or two years away still at that time, right? And it was never going to happen. This lockdown is not going to work at all, right? You can't keep this. But then this illustration was very powerful because it said that, okay, so this is time since first case, daily number of cases. They said that if we don't lock down, this is where we are going to end up, right? This is our current capacity, okay? We will be overwhelmed. All these people will get severely affected or perhaps will die, okay? You want this or you want this, right? The number of people who are going to be infected are going to be the same, right? Whether you want them to be infected in two months or in eight months is what you have to decide, right? They said, so, okay, let them get infected slowly so that we, we can take care of them, okay? So that was the idea. It was simple, powerful, everybody bought into it. Even, uh, you know, ex-president Obama tweeted about it, talked about it and said that there were nice animations uh, that were done with the same uh, chart and uh, it was very easy to communicate, illustrate the idea of what flattening the curve meant. Okay. Another uh, common uh, thing is this uh, Gartner's hype cycle. You might have heard about this, where every time uh, the new technology comes in, you know, there is uh, expected or inflated expectations about what it can do. And then there is a period of disillusion where you are kind of totally frustrated that nothing has happened. All, all technologies think about, no driverless cars, AR, VR, Anything, no, any new technology that comes up, there is like huge hype around it, you know, metaverse and all those things. I don't know, nobody talks about metaverse these days, right? So all these things, new, new technology comes in, everybody talks about it, they're going to say, no, it's going to fundamentally change uh, things and et cetera, et cetera, but nothing happens after that, and people just, and then more understanding and a more uh, measured uh, expectations begin to emerge, and then that's where the enlightenment, and then, this is where the productivity begins to happen. Basically, now we begin to, to fully understand what are the limits of this uh, technology, and therefore, you know, we are now have uh, more realistic expectations of what it can and cannot do, and then we work on those kinds of things, and then it begins to yield results. Okay. So again, you know, it's very simple to access, you know, nicely explained. Um, and another common uh, thing is this uh, foot pyramid. You all know as to how we should uh, balance our diet, right? So you, know, you kind of have more of this uh, than so majority of what you consume is carbohydrates, and then you know it, next it should be fruits, meat, poultry, fish, and all should be much less, and then fats and oils and sugar should be the least amount that you should take, right? And this is supposed to be considered to be a balanced, uh, you know, diet for consumption. Hopefully, it will keep you uh, healthy, right? So, these are, uh, you know, illustrations that use the visualization language in order to, but usually they are free of, uh, I mean, you cannot say that, you know, what time this happens, right? So the, the, the diagram does not tell you what is this time. Is it like one month, one year, nothing, right? But you generally get the idea. Okay, the second thing is visualization as a tool to support idea generation. Like um, idea illustration, idea generation relies on conceptual metaphors, but it takes place in more informal settings. Uh, such as brainstorming sessions, strategy sessions, the early phase innovation projects and also. The information type is usually very complex and undefined. Uh, the settings are working sessions, brainstormings. Primary skills that are required is, you know, team building, facilitation skills. Somebody who is able to facilitate a, a, a session like that. And the goals are to understand the problem, solve the problem, discover, to innovate, right? We use a lot of sketches, right? 
uh, in you know for us it is very common you know we do this quite intuitively this is part of our training as designers but you can see some of the uh, language that we use right so you see all of them are about a strategy session you can imagine where people are talking about how to uh, transform their business okay uh, instead of doing something should we do something else is essentially what the team is discussing here okay so you can figure out what they are right so they are they are spending a lot of uh, they have a lot of customers who spend little and they want to go to a place where they have fewer customers who are spending more okay or you know you see that um, you know being represented in multiple ways okay so you have this tiny squares many of them then bigger squares less of them okay so you have the market which is like that they want to become like that right or you have concentric circles so you have this core customers then you have this mid level customers then you have this uh, less desirable customers right so what they have is that they have now most of their customers are less desirable customers okay and then you have this other th so they are saying that you no know, let us increase this core customers make them bigger and then reduce them smaller right again okay, another way to look at the same thing uh, representing like you know uh, uh, so here is where most of our customers are let us get them here right and so on so the idea of bottom of the pyramid that you know uh, ck prakhlad talks about is also like that right so there are these customers uh, who, you know are typically in some kind of a pyramid uh, the highest paying customers the most discerning customers the customers who can afford the most expensive stuff are very little but they are at the top right but we have a huge base of customers who are who cannot afford to spend a lot right and his argument was that you know a place like india actually can benefit from serving the bottom of the pyramid right so these are all from the us strategy you can see that they are all trying to move to the bot top of the pyramid right they are all trying to focus on this less number of customers but they are high value customers right how to get them and then keep them because the less number of customers you deal with the less cost for the company right because they're going to spend more you know? rather than having 100 customers who spend too little let's have 10 customers who spend a lot right our business becomes easy okay so ck prahalad was a economist who completely argued the opposite uh, you know you know that kind of paradigm doesn't work for it you know typically businesses look to do this the first one right so he advocated that companies should try to do the uh, exact opposite right in a country like india there is a lot of wealth that is can be made at the by serving the bottom of the pyramid right because because the sheer volume of people who are at the bottom of the pyramid even if they spend little but if you have many of them you can still make money right and that is how he tried to convince big corporations and many companies in india have understood that really well right the traditional companies right for example unilever you know they came up with the shampoo sachets right this is a you know, great invention that came in about 30 years ago in india where you know, people cannot afford to buy a big size shampoo which will cost them you know 100 bucks you know, rather give them a 1 rupee sachet right but there are 1000 people who will buy that okay the bigger one so they started to focus on this bottom of the pyramid so you will have this small spice servings of many things in india only in india sir. only in india you will find small servings of coke you know all kinds of lace packet the smallest 10 rupee lace packet you will get it in india right you will never get it anywhere else i, I you know so that is because they understood that you know it, you can still make a lot of money by serving 10 rupee 15 rupee lace packet you know because there are lakhs of people who will buy that right and which is much better than you know few people buying this 1 kilo packet <coughs> so you can see that you know the visual language that uh, you know that is used here is about for generating ideas like I said, you know, uh, we uh, visual design uh, as, as designers use sketching a lot in, in our, you know, anything in, for our idea generation. So this is not at all alien to us, right? It is kind of should come naturally to us. So this is some kind of a, you know, visualization of the interior. 
you can see that you know, when you design products, when you design screens, right? You 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 use uh, you know uh, sketching as a process of generating ideas. Okay, the third and the fourth are where most of this interesting visualization happened, right? You are answering one or two questions with this kind of a project. Is what I suspect actually true, or what are some of the ways of depicting this idea, right? So what Dr. Snow did is visual confirmation. Often mistake it as discovery, right? But it's not something that he discovered. He already knew that, right? He was only confirming it with that visualization and using it as a powerful tool to persuade people, okay? So the question that uh, what kind, is what I suspect actually true, right? So what I suspect is that this well is causing uh, contamination and therefore the related cholera deaths, right? So I'm going to confirm, so that's visual confirmation. Or I already know uh, something and I want to, what are the best ways to depict it, right? For example, the yesterday's exercise that you did, right? So what are the best ways to depict the timetable for these two trains, okay? So that's visually confirming something, okay? So many examples that we saw, these are all fall under visual confirmation, okay? And the last type is exploration. They are open-ended data-driven visualizations intended to produce insights that can't be gleaned any other way, okay? Because you do not even know what the outcomes are. You know? The only way to know them is to visualize them. Okay, can you give me an example of uh, such a visualization? They know that you know it is possible. They they might have a vague hypothesis with it, but then you know what they discovered was you know truly uh, surprising. Uh, 